so you know a, a good song will get you through the darkest of times that's true you know i think that that's actually the power of music it has the power to uplift it has the power to give us strength when we don't have it it has the power to relate to us on a level that almost nothing does so yeah super yeah. props to to you musicians out there and all the bands hip-hop artists and and whatnot that uh, create the music that we all need in our life it's the soundtrack of our life yeah it, it's god's language and it's letting us know there's other people out there with the same thoughts same feelings same experiences mm -hmm. yeah you it's, are not alone it's connectivity music is yeah. connectivity yeah 100 percent. i love that All right, I am here and I am excited to introduce Benji Bonnick. What up, Ben? Woohoo! Glad to be here, bringing hip hop to the masses. Which, okay, now you know I'm a for <laughs> I couldn't wait to ask you about this because yeah. you know I'm a, I'm a former musician, okay? I, I can't remember if you know that or not, but uh, when we first met, you were in a rock duo one right. of the biggest nerd celebrated rock, rock duos out there like killing it love your guys's music but you don't just switch you don't <laughs> switch to rap you don't just switch to rap so you were obviously already digging and into rap and i say that because yeah i, I had a bandmate once okay this was in the 90s and we're, we're 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 practicing and i'm like hey i got a new song guys so we do it and we get done he's like what the hell is this supposed to be rap rock and I'm like, yes, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, right. There's nothing six, wrong with that. And six months later, he's like, dude, have you heard this? They're called Limp Biscuit. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it turns out I've heard that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'm like, that's what I told you we were going to be. So anyway, yeah. now you're doing rap. Tell me about the new album. I've listened to the whole thing already. Awesome. Dig every song. Love your flows. You're all over the place. You're nerdy <laughs> yeah. and insulting in all the good ways oh so, well that that's excellent so so yeah. what inspired these songs let's go through it song by song uh, no that's excellent yeah so um about a year and a half ago um i decided that you know i had done a lot of different musical styles over time i had done you know just straight up rock i'd done metal uh, i'd done a lot of pop and you know acoustic type stuff and uh with song hammer i i was in a group before that called conspiracy of thought and in the band Conspiracy of Thought, we actually did a lot of rap and rock music combined together. The bass player rapped and sang, and I played guitar and sang, and, uh, but I wrote a lot of the raps. And so it, it's always been something that I've loved. And uh, a good example with Songhammer was the song War as well, um, right. you know, where we had a rap rock battle with uh, Old Man Saxon, actually, who was on Rhythm and Flow on Netflix, you know, recently. Awesome. Um, yeah. And so... Uh, but regardless, I just, I had this love of hip hop going way back actually, you know, from when I was in junior high and high school and just loving the old school eighties rap type mm -hmm. stuff, you know, like Run DMC and LL Cool J and Beastie Boys and, you know, that oh. kind of stuff. Oh yeah. It connects a lot, you know, stuff oh. like that. The, the, and, the golden days of rap. Yeah. Yeah. They, definitely the golden era, you know? And, and so um, I wanted to do, I, I had done all these different projects, but I'd never done a full album that was dedicated towards really focusing on hip hop and elements of hip hop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And granted, I'm saying that, but I'm also, you know, a musician who plays bass and guitar and drums and keys and all these other things. And so I thought, well, I think this is my moment, you know, it's time to do it. <laughs> Gotta <laughs> seize it. Yeah, right. Carpe diem. Seize the hip hop. That's that's the Latin translation of carpe diem. Is oh, actually. God. There's your first tour shirt right there. Seize the hip hop. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and so uh, that that was the beginning of Benji Phonic, you know, and and, uh, and now I'm two videos in and I'm which are both excellent and funny and remind me, they have that kind of whimsical, fresh Prince of Bel Air vibe about them. Was that on purpose? That is super cool. You know, I it's interesting. A lot of people are making references to different hip hop that they love again from that kind of golden era of hip hop. And, uh, but that's the first fresh Prince. And I love that. I think yeah, that's super baby. Cool. 
Yeah, parents just don't understand. No, they don't. They yeah. don't. I wore that album out. Come on, <laughs> summertime, please. Bro brother, I had the, and then of course they did the single, The Nightmare on My Street, which was, you know, the Freddy Krueger uh, comments, you know, song. And uh, Yes, so, I remember that. Well, and actually into, you know, getting jiggy with it, you know, Will Smith stuff, you know, kept evolving. And actually, I really loved his stuff from the late 90s and the early 2000s. And uh, so I, I've been following him. Let's just say, let's just say society wise, he got a bad rap. Yeah. And, well, and yeah, definitely. And, and actually the, um, I, I think that, you know, people also just as hip hop was evolving, you know, a lot of the old school technicians, they, they were not being seen as, as being, you know, street enough or whatever. And also a lot of that party rap, in the mid 90s really got dogged on until the jiggy era came up and then puffy you know bring it brought it all back right you know, with, yeah. with shiny suits <laughs> which is what i was doing in the new video shiny suits so. which was it's a great suit it's a great suit <laughs> it's very golden yes that is quite frankly i love your choice in uh sweatshirt you're wearing right now for this oh yeah also in the video yeah, that's that's dope. That's dope. Okay, so let's so yeah. track number one is we stole hip hop, and so so yeah, I uh, you know I thought if I'm gonna start it I, and if I'm really trying to go back to kind of the old school roots, um, then I I had to basically go back to the idea of you know appropriation of the culture, and, <laughs> which which is it's really true. I mean. Now, granted, we now we have, you know, Eminem, obviously, and others that have really, you know, brought in, they've legitified the idea that, that a white hey, dude actually could rap. You're no Nick Cannon, sir. Hey, well, <laughs> I'm not afraid, though. Uh, that's all right. I, you know, that that's okay. I would, I would rather see you take on Eminem any day over Nick Cannon. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Well, and, and I'll tell you, the... Uh, 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 he would wipe the floor with me, and I'd love that. He could. I would love for the opportunity for him to wipe the floor with me. <laughs> Be an honor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and uh, but but I I like the idea, and and the truth of the matter is, there's a this is I'm jumping ahead, but the last track on the EP is called uh, "Ain't Nothing Wrong," and I'm mm -hmm. I'm talking about how, and it's maybe the most serious of the pieces, but I I'm talking about how. Blues music is basically the the foundation of all modern music that we listen to. Uh, preach, uh, brother, preach. Yeah, jazz of uh, of you know blues, obviously itself, but then into rock and roll, rhythm and blues, um, all the way into rock, metal, and then into hip hop, which mm -hmm. which and it's all cyclical. But but African roots based music started it all. And so, and and that song is all about. That's where everything came from, including hip hop at this point. And so, uh, so it's just this, returning cycle. Right. It's all cyclical, but it, it's all coming from that Afrocentric, Afro-American centric music. And and I am absolutely appropriate. <laughs> and I and I know I am. You know, and that's we still hip hop's about me appropriating this uh, and and taking it and just reinventing you know that wheel just keeps spinning you know it keeps moving around right, and it's right, music right. i love so much so. but it, but it, you're doing it with love and respect okay track oh, two 100 percent. yeah yeah i mean uh, and uh, and hopefully giving nods to you know you can actually hear uh, i use sometimes phrases or little catches or beats things from uh, everything again from run dmc to ll cool j to beastie boys to all that golden age canon yeah, you're paying homage. Yeah, definitely. It's stuff I love. Well, track two, what's that one about? So Rock Block Party actually is literally about that Golden Age Kim, and actually it's about the uh, the Holy Trinity of hip hop. So you have uh, the very first hip hop party, I think it's August 11th, and it's uh, 19... Is that the one in the Bronx? It is. It, it's uh, 1520 Sedgwick, Sedgwick Avenue. It's uh, DJ Cool Herc. I think it's August 11th, 1973. And he throws the first hip hop party. And so I was like, that, and, and because it's it's documented, I'm like, I'm writing about it. I've so, watched the documentary recently myself. Oh, the, the yeah, it, it's excellent. You know, uh, and Netflix has uh, like the evolution of hip hop, which is such a great series, which I think just has new episodes now. So it's, uh, 
Perfect. But I highly recommend it. I need more binging material, Netflix. There you go. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so so I wrote a, it's about that party, it's about Cool Herc, and then it's about uh, the venerable Africa Bambata and and uh, Grandmaster Flash. So those three are considered the trinity, holy trinity of hip hop because they're the ones who who did those parties and then perfected the art. I'm not familiar with that second name, so take me to school. Oh, a Africa Bambata? No, I Oh. I know Grandmaster Flash, but So so please also educate in, me. Yeah, yeah, also in the Bronx, Africa Bambata, he was a gang member who who started seeing a need for change in the community and he started throwing these parties and he got all of the different rival gangs to come together and start doing these parties together and his focus was peace, love, unity and having fun. And and so um, That's a good guy. Well, it was. He was amazing. Yeah, he still is. He's still doing stuff. Go looking for Africa Bambata online because he's actually still booking parties. Oh, so, wow. Amazing. So he he had this huge kind of Afrocentric beat style and and he both he and Cool Herc were doing what they called the merry-go-round technique which is where they were blending um, one record into the other but using those break beats again which was uh -huh. creating hip-hop and then it was of course uh, Grandmaster Flash who figured out how to use the same record twice and keep that break beat going infinitely and so it, it uh, anyway <laughs> <laughs> I'm educating. Why am I doing this? Because uh, I asked you to, because I didn't know who that was. But now I know who you're talking about from the documentary I watched. Yeah, I just yeah. couldn't remember his name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's great. I mean, the, uh, they are. This is not just an entertainment podcast, sir. We like right. to educate the people out there. <laughs> and, and it's sad that I'm the one doing the educating. Not, uh, I mean, not talking about you, but just in general. But a lot of people don't know where the beginnings wa were, oh, you yeah, know, but... hip hop. But this also shows that you're you're not just appropriating. You love it. You're you're oh absolutely. This, you re, you there's a respect in there. So let's go to track number three, Ragadocious Rhyme, <laughs> and the, which is the, the the latest video. So the first song we stole hip hop. Um, we filmed the video during the summer, and uh, that came out. I think it was August 28th. Um, oh, and. NPR station KBCR we did a, a live broadcast premiere where we counted down and then then uh, premiered we stole hip-hop well we just did the same thing again where uh, KBCR NPR had us come on uh, well me I'm sorry come on and David Fleming and myself an awesome interviewer uh, we did this whole hour-long countdown and interview and then we premiered the song braggadocious rhyme so all that early hip hop, I mean, they're, almost all the bands had some kind of brag and boast song, right? right? Yeah. And, if not every song for some of them. <laughs> every Easy e song was like yeah. that. Uh, Sir Mix-a-Lot or whatever, it's all, he's always the best. So, you know, I, I, I was listening to this song. Oh, and Run DMC's very first single is Sucker MC. Oh, that's right, yeah. And, and yeah. so I was, I thought, okay, you know, I need to, I need to show why I'm the best MC, Benji Phonic. You know, and and so I decided to write this brag and boast song. And uh, on the the EP, you hear this beautiful woman singing, and these other people singing in the choruses and stuff. That that's who I call the Human Wrecking Crew. It's uh, it's my cousins Evan and Janae Human, and their last name's actually Human. Oh, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so they're the Human Wrecking Crew. And uh, they they come in and they're doing amazing backups. So uh, I just wanted to do this brag and boast song and you know have this kind of real like come on it's time for a braggadocious rhyme. You know this real uh, I don't know sing songy fun chorus. Kind of, and, yeah, funky cheesy kind of right. vibe at the same time. But what what I do like about that song and and the video, great video. Yeah. Enjoyed the video. You can find it on our down the road show page and I'll there'll be a link down here in the comments on our YouTube page so that you can jump over to YouTube, make sure you watch it, make sure you like it, make sure you subscribe to the Benji Phonic YouTube <laughs> channel as well. Uh, but yeah, are those your parents behind you for one? Oh, oh super cool, yes. The, the, that's my mom and dad sitting behind me. I knew it. Yeah. I knew so it. What, 
So when I do say, uh, there's sometimes where I'm like pointing with my thumb when I'm saying that line, my mama said you're a sucker MC. <laughs> and it's because it's my mom who's sitting back there. Oh, and my, they have some of the great, like, so we filmed uh, a little side note about the, the video we were filming um, and both We Still Hip Hop and then Braggadocious Rhyme, we filmed on location all Riverside. So I'm in Riverside, I live in Riverside. So um, I want all the videos to be representing or at least these videos, I wanted to really represent Riverside. And so all the murals in We Still Hip Hop are all different murals around Riverside um, mm -hmm. that I'm rapping in front of. Uh, same thing. The the Lucky Greek is actually a, a a restaurant in Riverside. They they said, "Oh my gosh, we'd love for you to film the video here," because we went in and asked them and talked to them. And so we took half of their restaurant, and then smack behind me, I sat my parents, who were super good sports and willing to be in a <laughs> their stupid son's hip hop video. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but it was great. You could, I mean, you could you could see the family resemblance of your dad for sure, but like. The casualness of them back there was kind of like, yeah, we know we're doing this video. We we're doing it as a favor. We're <laughs> right. we're, we're glorified extras. <laughs> yeah, right, totally. Well, and uh, you know, we had um, in I think it was 2013 when uh, Death Is on the Way, the Songhammer video came out. Um, my dad was one of the pilgrims that that was walking, and he gets like captured and killed or whatever. <laughs> and, and so uh, ever since then, he's like, what am I going to be in another video? Oh, <laughs> yeah. So I, finally, I was like, all right. And But my mom had never been in a video. And this song was perfect. And at the end, you see actually see her say, you're a sucker MC. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> so, hey, it's funny how quick they go from uh, when you're going to get a real job to put me in your videos. Yeah, right. right. Uh, well, well, one, of my, one of my favorite things about Braggadocious, though, is like you talk a lot of shit in that song. <laughs> right. <laughs> but very cleanly. Yeah, right, right. So again, I'm, I'm kind of hearkening back to, um, and that's kind of my style regardless, you know, even with Songhammer and, and Conspiracy of Thought and all that, you know, that's always been kind of my tip. But, but uh, definitely, you know, I wanted to, again, hearken back, because when you, even Beastie Boys, like, they're constantly saying, like, they always, like, they're about to say the word, and then they don't, and instead they, uh, you know, they, they say whatever. Yeah, right. And and so drop some bass behind closed doors. And so I wanted to also have that cheekiness in there as well and, and kind of make something. And also, I'm always wanting to put stuff on the radio. And so the more, you know, mm. the more clean stuff is in that regard. Gotcha. But also, I want to be able to do community events. I want to be able to do, you know, perform anywhere at any time. And yeah. so, and the best way to be able to do that is to have the most accessible lyrics possible. Right. Yeah. And, and that's a good way to put it. And that, make, and that makes a lot of sense because uh, I think I wrote one song for radio. It was yeah. my only under four minute song. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Get that. Track number four. Let's talk about that. Okay, uh, Future Wife, I think, is track number four. And uh, so, you know, so, you know, I, I thought I needed to really explain how I met my wife, you know, and, you know, and there's, it, it, this is a statistical fact. You can find it on Google. You know, the number one best place to find your future soulmate is, is the hip hop club. We all know that. I mean, that's where everybody finds their future mate. Am I not right? I thought it was the frozen section at the grocery store but you know oh i'm a okay. big i'm well, a big i'm a big lover of uh, my blue heaven so yeah but you know hey <laughs> you could melt all this stuff yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I also love that movie so uh but uh so i no i just decided to write this this fun cheeky whimsical song you know about a dude who benji phonic you know who who uh drives in with his hoopty and decides to, you know, go to the club, but for some reason they don't want to let him in. And so he sneaks around the back and finds his way in. And, you know, up in the club, he finds up in the club, everybody's so fly. He struts like a player saying, I'm that type of guy, which is an LL Cool J reference, by the way. I'm that type of guy. So, uh, 
I, I just thought it would be fun to, you know, just have this, you know, idiot going into the club and seeing what happens. And, you know, hilarity ensues, I suppose. So are you already writing the next album? So yes, the answer is um, I've, I've already recorded um, and actually gone through production with several songs. Um, I, I've, I've got four songs already in the can, ready to go uh, for the second EP. And then I have um, another, I don't know, I actually, this is gonna sound ridiculous, but I have about 14 songs in production. <laughs> and they go in a lot of different directions with some different styles and um, for, each EP is going to kind of focus on a little something different uh, from the hip hop perspective. And so the next one I have, you know, some almost jazz sound. I have an almost jazz sounding piece that's uh, very kind of loungy sounding that my cousin plays. He's a professional pianist. And uh, can I say that? Pianist? <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to have to bleep that fucking shit. Watch your mouth. No, that'd be great. <laughs> you should do that. So. The, uh, so he's playing just this dope piano, and uh, and then I'm rapping over it, and it's called Spy Versus Spy. I'm a spy. And so, uh, and then I have another song uh, called I'm Not Hard, and I, I'm talking about, you know, not being tough, and why I'm not, and I actually... Um, oh, bust the mill of the, the mill toxicity myth. Well, yeah, and actually, and the funny thing is that it's, it's in the same beats per minute and a very similar, not the same beat, but a very similar beat to Straight Outta Compton. So <laughs> it's pre pretty awesome. And well, those then, in the know will know. They'll hear it. Yeah, exactly. If you know hip hop, you're, you're probably going to hear that and be like, oh, yeah, <laughs> the dork is using that. And so, but yeah, so I, I'm, I'm just trying to go in some different directions and, you know, really yeah. experiment and... And just and also, pick your favorite songs. Honestly, yeah. And and also having the maybe the most fun I've ever had musically. I mean And that comes and shines through when you hear the music for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I hear that when I listen to your music. And as a musician, I understand that too, because like yeah. I had so much fun in the studio album, recorded my album only ever recorded one album, okay. but I had two more full albums written with a third one as a backup <laughs> yeah right uh, and you know the first album was sunlit world then it was gonna be dark world and uh, you know plays on that right uh and so my first album I i'm with you like i was like you know what i'm putting all the bells and whistles on this first album in, yeah, case, right. I, in case i never record a second album which i didn't so i'm glad i did because i used a live harpist i used a horn section yeah there's, there's nothing but live musicians on my entire album and now the you know the guy who recorded it for me and engineered the entire thing Jesse Wright love you Jesse you him he's like a brother to me now and he was just telling me the day it was like I was listening to this and I'm so proud of the work we did to on That's it awesome. and it's like ten years later because this was like yeah. this was before I started down the road show so this was like twelve years ago that I was in the studio album and like listening to it now like I'm proud of it like I'll be listening to that in thirty years and going I did my thing you know and that I. I went to a seminar once and they were, it was like a A&R seminar. There were people there from a bunch of different labels and they, they said every song that you put out, every single that you focus on, everything that you do, you need to make every piece basically like a calling card because anyone that listens to it and they were talking about the industry, like if you're submitting or something like that, but anything you submit, if it's not your very best and you haven't put like everything into it and tried to, you know, make it the best it could be, then whatever the result is that's heard by an A&R rep, and that could be on the radio, that could be anywhere, anywhere that that music goes, you know, it's going to represent that. And so uh, for me, I always, it's exactly like you said, all the bells and whistles need to be in there and, and it needs to have as much as you can shove into it and and as a result my version of hip-hop is very dense musically <laughs> it's not, it's, you know, it's, it, when i was working i was uh i was in the studio with dj coupon he's uh dave swanson who's who's my uh my engineer and we were in there working he's like this does not sound like hip-hop he's like this is 
almost like we're bordering on rock music here. And, and I was like, but the beat and all this stuff. And he's like, yeah. And the, the flute and the bass player and the organs and the, you know, acoustic guitars and electric guitar. He's like, too much. No, <laughs> so, no, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and that's me. So, and I'm okay with that, you know, and I performed actually a lot of, of hip hop shows recently and when my tracks come on it's it sounds like the thunder is just come in all this all this and people are like oh my gosh what is that? what is that and because it's a lot of music i thought we came to a rap show gore is here yeah, they're, right. gonna, they're gonna yeah, kill exactly. us blood. and that's okay i'm cool with that you know well let's, okay here's one of my favorite things then as a yeah. musician band names how many band names have you had What's one of your favorite band names that you never got to use? Okay, so the band names that I have had were Conspiracy of Thought, The Red Fist Revolution, uh, Songhammer, and now Benji Phonic. And so th those, are, those are the groups that I've been a part of or, or whatever. Uh, the, I think the, the fun thing about Benji Phonic is and uh, somebody asked me this in an interview recently. They they were like Benji Phonic, so it's because it's your name and it's you know Phonic, so it's like. Don't be skipping to my next question. Oh, oh my bad. Oh. So how did you come up with Benji Phonics? Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was uh, I was looking for domain names where I could have everything right. <laughs> so, Twitter uh spotify uh you know uh, instagram facebook uh dot com all of it social so, media smart yeah, business right. smart so, sir so it was benji and whatever i tried benji and a hundred different things and then i did phonic uh with and uh p-h-o-n-i-k and and bing it comes up this is available everywhere that's me that's what you said. that was there you go all right Woo! first in market and so <laughs> that that was really the clincher was and but here's the deal so um, that was that was your triple a auto repair moment for the yellow yeah, right, pages right right if i can have the domain for everything with it then i'm going to take it and so so that that was really what it was but at the same time um so this is something that I've said in interviews before, but um, so I'm dyslexic, you know, I, I've, uh, I've always had trouble with reading and, you know, I've, uh, I'm diagnosed and the whole deal. And so growing up was in early school, real rough. Um, yeah, they wanted to hold me back a grade. Yeah, me, me too. Yeah, absolutely. Same thing. In fact, the only reason I wasn't held back was that I actually went in with my parents and I set up basically a a a point by point why they shouldn't hold me back to the principal <laughs> and and it convinced the principal not to let me get held back but wow. i actually went in and did that but so oh, well then real, real quick the only, yeah. reason, the only reason i wasn't was because my mom was an ex-teacher and she's the baddest bitch on the fucking planet and right. she went in there and ripped them a new one and was like yeah, she uh -uh, advocated for you my son is actually really smart yeah well and and you know and uh so uh, I um, the the first band I was a part of Conspiracy of Thought Mike Partial the guy who was playing bass and singing um, he's been a special ed teacher um, in Colton for for years and oh, bless uh, yeah and he's amazing and and uh, the people who advocate for those with disabilities are those are some <laughs> super important people in our lives. Not you know? all superheroes wear capes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So total side note, but props to those, <laughs> those who are doing it. And okay, so back to the, uh, the name. Anyway, so Benji Phonic, P-H-O-N-I-K, you know, Phonic, B-E-N-J-I, P-H-O-N-I-K, you know. Like so hooked on phonics. Yeah, right, right. And so that was part of it. And then, but spelling it incorrectly made it a little bit better with phonics. <laughs> a little more tongue well. in cheek. Okay, I get that. Yeah, I get that. So as, the, as a dyslexic, it just felt right. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> so. and, and that makes sense because I love, I love a good tongue in cheek name and my all time favorite band name I ever used, but it, we, it was never an official band. It was just a bunch of group of friends of mine that would get up on um, a Monday night thing that I hosted at the bar I worked at. And right. so, 
musicians would come in from all over the place to play and type of a thing. Yes. And even, we never played a song less than seven minutes. Okay. <laughs> Because we just love to, we just, I, I've been fortunate and I've played with some amazing musicians over the years. Right, or, you, you, yeah. were, you were a jam band. You were, you yeah, were, we were a jam band. And since, I, and since I'm Casey and everybody's like, oh, where's the Sunshine Band? <laughs> By the way, Casey from Casey and the Sunshine Band is 30 years older than me, internet. Boom. <laughs> anyway, so most of my band names were, you know, Casey and the Comet, Casey and right. the Moonbeams, you know, blah, blah, blah. my, my all time favorite was. Casey and the Bluesberry Jam Band. Ooh, I like that one. That's dope. Right? I'm pretty yeah. proud of that name. Like, the name was better than we were as a group, but. <laughs> I I've been in that too. I get that. <laughs> but, but it's all in a name. So then uh, you got another video off this album or what's next for Benji Phonics? Okay, so um, next is in the, in the spring. So obviously Braggadocious Rhyme just came out. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't already checked it out um, on Facebook or on YouTube, you can look up Benji Phonic and, and see the We Still Hip Hop or Braggadocious Rhyme videos. Also, I have like these the uh, uh, episodic videos that I put out once a month. That's the adventure, Benji Phonic's Adventures in Hip Hop. Fun. And uh, I'm like in the studio and, you know, recording and doing all this kind of stuff. And it's, uh, it's, I use some, I do some amateur time traveling. It's, it's good stuff. It's a, <laughs> with, Professional time traveling doesn't even work out right. It's true. And, and actually my, uh, my, my engineer, DJ Coupon, he says that, you know, amateur time travel is one of the three most expensive hobbies <laughs> next to recording music and golf. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's yeah. true. That's all true. That's yeah. all true. Expensive hobbies. But yeah, so coming up this spring. So coming up this spring, I'm going to be doing uh, obviously some more video work. I, I have a new EP that'll be coming out, and uh, the, one of the songs that we're going to be shooting a video for is called "I Don't Even Know Where I've Been," and uh, and so we're going to be walking the streets uh, all throughout Southern California, actually, and and uh, doing live takes on street corners and stuff all over the place so be watching for benji phonic roaming around with a camera it's gonna be very very awesome can't wait to see if i recognize some of those street corners yeah uh, seriously well then all right so now now that we've promoted you and all that you are as the glorious nerd rapper you are let's get nerdy what are you watching what are you nerding out on right now okay you know uh so i watched the witcher of course ah, i just got finished with it yeah i know and you know so what I loved about that series was the curveball time thing going on. And you Which don't is exactly why I'm going to go and watch the whole thing again. I know. You don't realize till half. Okay, uh, this is a spoiler. So if you don't like spoilers right now, I'm going to give a little bit of a spoiler real quick. That's but fine. This entire podcast is nothing but spoilers. Okay, that's cool. So you, it's hard to, to wrap your head around the idea of, of uh, halfway through, you, you realize oh my gosh, you know, half of, half of what I just watched happened before what I'm watching now is happening. It, it's a real, it's a real, right. I, I love that. So anyway, that kind of melts your mind a little bit. And then yeah. But it makes you watch the second half once you realize that in a completely different light. It's smart TV. And actually, I, I really, really like that. Again, actually, um, something that I'm geeking out on and it's not, you know, it's not from the geekosphere, but again, um, that uh, documentary series, uh, Evolution of Hip Hop, uh, which is, I think, also Netflix, uh, highly recommended. You know, I've, I've probably watched it like five times, you know, like when I'm oh, watching, wow. doing the dishes, watching it, doing it, just because it not only is the music amazing, but right. the information and just the detail and also the props that are given to people that you and I probably would have recognized from like the late 80s or early 90s that that we knew were cool, but maybe didn't move on to, you know, beyond, but were setting the stage for, for what came next. Let's, let's just say, I'm, prob I'm just throwing this out here. This is probably just a guess, but uh, you and my friend Roman in junior high, who introduced me to two live crew, <laughs> might have been on the short list of white people listening to that. <laughs> yeah, right. So, uh, I just had a friend, so the, the video went live for Braggadocious Rhyme uh, this week, and, or last, uh, this last week, and then basically I had this high school, or it was high school and junior high friend who got back to me and said, 
oh my gosh, because I, I we had like smuggled this Sir Mix-a-Lot tape, you know, I, into the house or whatever. I can't remember what the deal was. And and he's like, he's like, oh my gosh, I got this. Let's listen to it. And we, so I remember sitting, I was living up in Lake Arrowhead and we're, we're sitting in his room, you know, listening, oh, 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 you know, listening to this. And yeah, he, I think that the next tape he did smuggle was something like a two life, oh no, it wasn't two life crew. It was uh, too short. Oh, and mm, it's uh, too short. Uh, from the Bay Area. Yeah. And um, and so, but yeah, you know, it's that that stuff. That stuff was, you know, it was on the no no. Oh yeah, very much so. Right? <laughs> so, so, but then again, so was MTV when it came out. I wasn't allowed to watch right. MTV. We didn't have it in my our house, and I would sneak over to a friend's house who lived on the other side of town in in Idaho where I grew up. You right. know, small oh, town. Okay, right. Right by BMX over there, and we would watch MTV together. And I still remember. You know, he was like me. I was like, I'm not allowed to go. He's like, Pfft. yeah. You do everything your parents tell you. Yes, I did until that yeah, moment. Yeah. <laughs> and I still remember the very first video I ever saw: Van Halen jump. Oh, that's yeah, awesome. That's, that's a good, good one. It's a good way to start. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So okay, cool. Witcher. Anything else? Uh, so I said the evolution of hip hop. Are you wanting stuff that that might be in the geekosphere? Oh, well, just anything, anything, uh, anything you're reading, anything you're watching, anything Ooh. you're listening to, audiobooks, like. Okay, Nerdosphere. Um, I'm a huge, uh, I, I love books, so I, I'm a big reader. Um, you know, everything from early on, like Harry Potter to Lord of the Rings. Uh, oh, perfect. You know, then I'm going to turn you on to three friend authors. Oh, excellent. Well, and uh, so I've been. I've been reading, I reread the Dune series, uh, Frank Herbert, which, which, you know, started in the 70s, and then he wrote into the 80s. Well, his son, Brian, took, when he, he passed away before he was able to finish the Dune series, and then he passed, his son found, like, a, Frank had, had taken a lot of notes about his story arc and where it was going and all this kind of stuff, and then he had also had, like, all this prequel information that he had written down, and then his son discovered, like, a, it was like a PO box or a safe deposit box that had like manuscript stuff in it that wasn't Ooh. books, but it was just notes. Well, his son started writing all these prequel books and all this stuff, and they're phenomenal. And so, and um, so, how many so, books are there in the original series? In the original series, there's uh, let's see, Dune, uh, Dune Messiah, Children of Dune, Heretics of Dune. Uh, chapter house dune so i think there's like five in the original series and okay. then but brian herbert um has now helped to write i want to say there's like 15 books or something like that holy and, crap so is that what the new movie series is based on his stuff the, no the new movie series the new movie is based on on i think original dune so i think it's actually going to be like dune and then part of dune messiah and i think that they're going to do another movie that'll be the end of dune messiah and the children of dune uh, that, uh, at least this is what i think right those uh, have always been on my list so now i got to throw them in and listen to them because i can't okay. read it anymore dune is george rr R. martin who writes game of thrones and yeah. i i love those books as well yeah don't get me started i decided yeah. not to read uh game of dragons or the last one because it's oh, like dancing. Dance of Dragon, whatever. I don't yeah, care what the hell the name of it is at this point. George, right. until you finish the last book, I'm not reading it anymore. Because then I'm going to got to go back and I got to read it again. And it his makes, style of writing is already so confusing with this perspective true. and this perspective. And just like, I had to go back and read the first two books three right. times to figure out shit. Anyway, sorry. So <laughs> George R. R. Martin, I would say, is the, is the Frank Herbert of fantasy. Whereas, so Frank Herbert, who wrote Dune, his style of writing is very much like George R. R. Martin. Rather, George R. R. Martin is very much like Frank Herbert. And so when I first started reading the A Game of Thrones, I was like, oh my gosh, this is the fantasy version of Dune. And, and so, because they're, they're similar writers and the way that they jump from characters and different people and different perspectives and voices it, it's it's almost identical in some ways so yeah highly suggest the dune series and and all the prequels and the newer books excellent excellent well i'll add those to my uh uh audio listening yeah very cool for sure 
Well, excellent. Thank you for being on the show, uh, Benja Phonics. Uh, we look forward My to pleasure. talking to you again. Yeah. Thank and you so much for having me. You know, just being able to, uh, you know, talk a little hip hop history, being able to talk a little sci-fi and fantasy, being able to share some music, man, that's what it's all about. So I super thank you. Well, you, you, co you come from a similar generation of me where we're multifaceted people who like lots of different things. We're not just one nerdy lane. Renaissance men. Yeah, yeah. you're a Renaissance nerd. <laughs> right, right. There's another shirt for you. There's another shirt. I for like these are, these are all free IDs. Go yeah. ahead and take them. <laughs> I'm stealing that one. Yeah, all yours. It's all yours. <laughs> right here on the podcast. You guys heard it. That's awesome. it is. Uh, but yeah, where can everybody find you on social media and follow you so that they can catch you performing live and stuff? Excellent. So you want to find Benji Phonic online? You're going to go to b e n j i p h o n i k dot com. Or if you look up Benji Phonic or like uh, go to Facebook, you know, slash Benji Phonic. Like I said, I stole all the domains for everything. So it's uh, anywhere you search Benji Phonic, you're going to find me. So Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, the whole gambit. Oh, and also, of course, iTunes and Spotify and everywhere else, you know, look up Benji Phonic and you're going to find some awesome alternative hip hop music. So there you go. Look up Benji Phonic and play him for your friends. They're gonna enjoy his music just as much as you are. Thank you, Ben, for being on the <laughs> show. It's always a pleasure catching up with you. And uh, now that I'm not in California anymore, I can't say I'll see you at a con near you, but I can right. say I'll see you down the road. Awesome, down the road show rocks or raps. You're a dork. <laughs> <laughs> In all the good ways. Awesome. When I say that, I mean that as a compliment. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. I take that honorably. That's good. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> hey, everyone. Head on down the road, down Route 66, and come on down to Albuquerque Comic Con. It's going on this weekend, so if you're looking for something fun to do, it's not all about comic books. This is just entertainment in general. And if you're a serious art collector, stop by my friend Jerry's booth. He's got the stuff. I've been following Jerry and his art for eight years now. And as far as I'm aware, he was the first artist out there that was printing on metal. He's easy to find at any convention, by the way, his booth is lit up. And it's lit up that way to complement his art. Because before he started doing art, he was an artist of lights for rock concerts. So that's why every single piece of art looks like it's its own rock show. And they say imitation is the best form of flattery. And now you can find tons of artists out there that are printing on metal. However, Jerry always does limited edition prints, so you know you're getting something worth your money. But this guy makes some really cool 3D art, and we even drew a crowd. All right, now let's go hit the con floor and see what Albuquerque Comic Con has to offer. With any luck, I'll run into some friends. I'm here with my personal spirit animal, Animal! Ah! At least a three mile run, I'm, I'm not making this up. Three seconds. Oh,
So for years at cons, uh, people have accused me of being Walter White because of my fedora and cosplaying when I was just being myself. And now here I am at Albuquerque Comic Con in New Mexico, where all of Breaking Bad was filmed around this area, and no more fedora. Opportunity missed. <laughs> Another reason I didn't cosplay Walter White, he just looks uncomfortable. All right, so if you're a fan like me of Breaking Bad, well, you gotta come down to the Albuquerque Comic Con. Check out where they were cooking the meth to begin with, that pretty blue meth that you shouldn't be doing. Don't do drugs, kid. But anyway, and El Camino, what a great spinoff. Bravo, Breaking Bad, and Albuquerque Comic Con. Come on, this is cool. Come on down. Come on down and check it out. Come on, this is Rob. Guys, you need to come to Albuquerque Comic Con. Yo, B. And also, we're going to have Daniel and Lewis here at 2 o'clock. They are the, the cousins from, uh, they're Tupo's cousins from Breaking Bad. They're going to be taking pictures right out here. Come on in, let's show you. A real one. Not a, not a fake one. This is the real deal. The real and, deal. And you on can El see Camino. the lab. Yes. Wow. So if you are a fan of the El Camino spin-off movie from Breaking Bad, get down to Albuquerque Comic Con today. Come check it out for yourself. Get some autographs. Meet some celebrities. Come inside where it all happened and where it all got filmed. We'll see you down here. Right here at Albuquerque Comic Con. Dude, that's awesome. All right, so here we are at Albuquerque Comic Con. I'm in Celebrity Row, which is always a hot spot. You got the original Hulk right over there, Lou Ferrigno. If you're a fan of Karate Kid, Ralph Macchio's back there. If you're a fan of the original Wolverines, of course, Red Dawn, the original. Not the remake, the original. Thomas Howell's back there. Uh, if you're a Walking Dead fan, Ross Marquand is here. Uh, and he's just... He's just a delightful man. Come get his autograph. Uh, if you're, they got an entire row of Power Rangers over here to my left. So if you're a Power Rangers fan, guess what? Albuquerque Comic Con's got something for you. Uh, if you're into anime, tons, tons of anime voiceover actors here too. Uh, guess what? Two different actors from Supernatural are here as well. Elena Huffman and Mark Shepard. Come get your autograph with them. Get a photo. And of course, Dante Bosco is here as well. He's always, always an awesome dude. So anyway, yeah, Albuquerque Comic Con, got it going on. Good show, Jim, good show. Probably obsessed with Baby Yoda like everybody else. Why go buy one when you can build your own? Okay, so here we are, Albuquerque Comic Con. Just ran into an old friend. I love him. If you're gonna recognize him from Face Off. I recognize him from my Facebook because I love watching him sculpt and do his thing. Thank you. That's Your Yoda awesome. turned out dope. Thank you. What are you working you, on next? Uh, any and everything that I can. Uh, He's for hire. I am for hire. So if you need a creature suit, prop, or how can they find a you on laugh, Instagram? How can they find you? You could just look up Rashad Santiago or RashadSantiagoStudio.Weebly.com or you can just look up Rashad Santiago on Facebook and Instagram. You can find all my stuff. Yeah, ex extremely skilled artist, but not just that, he's one hell of an awesome guy. So you're gonna want him on set because not just that, he's gonna deliver what he promises yes. and he's affordable. Yes, I am. So just don't lie about your budget, people, yeah, because we're lie. sick of that crap. Don't lie about we're all your sick budget. Of that. Yeah. Lie all yeah. the time. It, just, it, it happens. <laughs> it happens. But find him at a Comic Con near you. Follow him on Instagram and check out all of his amazing artwork. He's like one of my favorite people to follow. Well, thank you. That means a lot. All right. And we'll see you all down the road. Yes, you will. Bye. Kaboom! Kaboom! It's Elena Huffman! Hey! So let's catch up here, Elena. Yeah. Let's go back to the beginning. Whoa. You've been in a, <laughs> we originally met at Wizard World Convention in Anaheim, and that was a blast because you were fresh off of Smallville. Yeah, 10 years ago. 10 years. The first Black Canary on TV. So that leads me. I have to ask, did you watch Crisis? Uh, no. I was really busy this week because... Um... <laughs> She's going, she's going to other conventions been, yeah. and she's acting because no, we're getting to that stuff next in the questions. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, my kids had snow days like all week and so our whole schedule was off. But yeah. I did want to watch it because I like, 
I'm friends with my other fellow Canaries, Katie and Juliana, and so I, I really wanted to support it, and I do hope that there's a spinoff. And I haven't heard. I'm, it's a I won't spoil thing. anything here for her, then. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know it, it was a backdoor I can't wait. It's gonna be, yeah. There's yeah. gonna be all kinds of great stuff coming And there's like the Birds of Prey thing. Mm -hmm. I know. It's, it's like so a time be, to be like a It female. is an amazing time for woman empowerment and entertainment, and it's about damn time. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I totally, well, I tend to play strong characters. Female characters, yeah. That's my thing, and I don't mind it. Um, so I always feel like, actually I just read a great Betty White quote today, mm. because it's her birthday. Happy She's birthday. the bomb, yeah, happy birthday Betty. <laughs> and she said, like I've never looked at work that I didn't get, rather the things that I did get. So there's a lot of roles that I don't get, and I don't tend to think of them, and they're just not who I am. I tend to play these really strong, amazing characters. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that more and more of those are being written, and they're age appropriate. I'll be 40 this year and I feel like, oh my god, my life is about to start. Yeah. But I feel great. I'm like, I, I don't know, I just feel like I have 40's the new 20. That's what they say. Yeah. 40's the new 40, but I'll take it. Yeah. I'm good with it. <laughs> I'm full grown. I've earned every line on my face. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the battle scars of pride. Yes. For sure. Yeah. And, but yeah, you look great. Let's not dwell on how awesome you look compared to how I'm feeling these days. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but speaking of strong characters, a lot of the fans out there are gonna know you as the Queen of Hell from Supernatural. Yeah. Last season. Yeah. Now, I know you can't give me any spoilers, nor do you probably know what's going on. I don't know any, on, I don't get the script. But, but what do you want to happen to the Winchesters? What would you like to see happen, being both SPN family, being on the show, and being a fan, I know you are. Um, I... I actually don't know. Like, I don't even know what's going on with those characters. They're my friends, and I want them to, like, enjoy. And I want, I want like, it to be a nice send-off. An epic end, yeah. Yeah. Like, they deserve it. Yeah. Like, I really see it sort of like, I, um, I feel like they've been through a lot, and they really need just some contentment in their lives. Right. So it would be nice if everybody left at peace. But being said, you know, Ruthie is the new queen of hell. She's Love like, Ruthie, baby, yeah, yes. one of my best, best friends. She's amazing. I could Thanks think for letting me hang out with you guys at Comic-Con. That's yes, a blast. Always, always. He's my Comic-Con pal. Um, yeah, I mean, I couldn't be more proud to have, you know, such great friends that are on such great shows. And she's killing it. She's amazing. She's killing it. Yeah. How current are you? Because I don't want to say anything. I don't know anything. Okay, I won't say it won't, anything. It won't be a spoiler, though. I so. won't say anything, but so. I knew they were full of crap and you weren't going anywhere, but anyway. I know. I know, they keep killing her, right? Right. Doesn't it's like, she, how, like, do, how, do you, how do you kill her? You can't kill her. I like, know, and she's so tiny. She's so So I gotta tell a great story, though. Oh, yes, we love stories. So I was, I was on set when they fa shadowing. I really want to start to get into directing. Awesome. I, ha I have a trajectory for that. It's a big job, right. anyone who has done it. It's I have four scope. children, and so it's something that I want in my pipeline, but probably in the next five to seven years when my kids are because it really takes you away from your family for a long time and I'm a single mom. Right. Anyway, um, I was shadowing Phil Segrisha and we shot this one episode where, I don't know if you guys remember, Ruthie gets shot and like a, a Fergus blows up one of her boyfriends. Oh yes, <laughs> it's just like just driven and covered in guts. <laughs> and it was so funny because she was so nervous. And so she's so tiny, right? She, she's just... She's itty bitty, but yeah. like powerfully but powerful. strong, like with... Energy and, and we just... couldn't be like more opposite. Like she's so conservative and I'm a little wild. She's so tiny. You two are a lot of fun to hang out together <laughs> with. Like yeah, we're really fun. You're peas in a pod without being peas in a pod. Yeah, so we're like completely from different pods. Yeah. Opposites we attract. Go, yeah, that is case in point. Um, but she's like one of my best friends, and so she was like, she was standing there, and I just keep thinking of this because she's so badass. But she was like, <sighs> like just waiting for this gun to explode guts all over her. And that's my Ruthie story. I got a lot of Ruthie stories, but that's one of them. Which I would love to hear, but we're here to talk to you. So, <laughs> coming up, first of all, I love the 100. Thank yes. you for hiring her, the 100. Me too. What can you tell me about your character? What can you tell me about the future of, of you being on that show? So actually, for the first time in my career, I've like I've come onto a lot of shows late in their in their trajectories. Mm -hmm. I've never felt like, oh, I have to go and watch it. This is the first show that I've been on that I'm like, 
what is happening? I have to find out because it, it's like Game of Thrones. It's crazy. Like there's all these little tribes and things and you have to know what's going on. So I've actually, it's the first show I've been on that I've watched from the beginning. Ooh. Ooh. I know. I'm not totally caught up. I think I'm like on season five. So I haven't watched season six and I'm in season seven. Right, coming up. So my character is a bad guy. Surprise. Yay. Yeah. Stretch them acting legs. Yeah. And she's badass. Surprise. Not a stretch. Yeah. And she sort of leads this revolution and there's like alliances that are made and um, there, there are some very redeeming qualities about her. Um, we've got five episodes left after this next one, mm -hmm. and um, there's some really good stuff. I can't, I can't and, and I believe say much you're in spoiling. five or six episodes? I, in the first, in the beginning, and then there's, I'll probably have a handful more in the back end of the season. Good, so you so got I'm a nice little story arc. I'm a, a good chunk of the season. I'm yeah. excited, I'm yeah. excited. And, and that's one of those shows, like, I'm not gonna lie to you, producers of the 100, I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it, and yeah. it, it kind of, it was rough the first, five episodes of the first season, but then after that, it just kind of snowballed for me, and I was hooked. It's heavy. I think it's one that you definitely, like, have to break up. Right. Um, so when I, when I went on... Not like the Irishman break up. Definitely right. break that up over, like, three segments. Yeah. Or Marriage Story. Oh, I haven't got into that yet. <gasps> Is that going to make me ball like a little baby like you know I am? Yeah. yeah. That's why I haven't watched it yet. Yeah. Adam Driver. I, I, yeah. Oh, my, oh my God. He... That's why I keep hearing. Ways. That's why I keep hearing. Like, like you're like, oh. And anyone, if you've gone, yeah, it's. I have not, but I've been through enough of my own. Bullshit. Yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, 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 I took it in probably three parts. Oh. The, the that three rough. intermissions were like. <gasps> yeah, it's Ouch. hard. Okay. But I, but I felt like I had to watch it because I felt like if I didn't watch it, I would miss something. Right. Um. Anyway, the hundred. <laughs> yeah, the hundred. This is what we do. We talk. We go on tangents. It like so when I started the show, I went in for my, um, I went in for my like my uh, look, my consultation for my look. So I look totally different than I look now. Oh, of course. I yeah. walked in and if I was. You've like, never seen the show. It's just wild. Yeah, and I was like, I walked in with my hair like this. Post-apocalyptic wild. Yeah, but my haircut's exactly the same as Eliza's. So I was like, how's this gonna work? Yeah. We, I look totally different. As like all my characters, you're not gonna recognize me. And then, um, so so as we were breaking down my look, my daughter Charlie came to set with me, and she mm -hmm. got bored. So I was like, well, why don't you start watching the show? And Eliza's like, oh, you, I, it's pretty heavy. <laughs> you might not want her to watch it. <laughs> but she started watching it, and then she just got hooked, and it was still summertime. So we just started watching it, but I, literally, like, I can handle two or three episodes. Mm. She would watch, like, five in a row. Mm, your daughter's a binger. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, she also sucks her thumb. I'm like, I'm going to watch you when you're older. Like, she might have some issues. But she, <laughs> but she would, she'd like, I'd come in the living room and it's still on. I'm like, God, don't you feel sick? Like, this is heavy shit. Anyway, so that's why I haven't caught up. Because I can watch three or four and then I need a, a little break. And then I'll watch three or four more. Uh, which is also why I have not watched The Irishman yet. But it's on my January list. Right. That's pretty yeah. heavy in your way. Scorsese. Yeah. And it, it's amazingly good. Oh, Every, yeah. Everyone in it is brilliant. But I also but have a little bit of a fundamental issue. Like, I am, That could have been a series. Yeah, of course. I am gonna watch it on my phone, and then I feel like I'm betraying Scorsese in some way because he specifically told us not to. No, he made it for Netflix. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Yeah, you can control us. You don't. Scorsese. Yeah, you don't get to control us. So, anyways, um, <laughs> I'm probably gonna watch it tonight on okay. my phone. Okay. Oh, yeah. well, um, it's not like you've slept anyway. No, I woke up at three, guys. Um, she was so like, "Let's do this interview. Come pick me up. I'm tired as hell." I'm like, "Oh, I haven't slept either. This will be fun." This will be so great. Um, so the 100 is really good. It's good. You guys are going to love it. Tune into the 100. Yeah. Her character is going to kick some serious ass. Yeah. So because I do of have everything little... that's the story arc that's about to unfold has a lot to do with prisoners. So, you know, it's space post apocalypse, and now you got prisoners coming out of cryogenic freeze. Like, yeah. And I'm pretty sure she's one of those. So it's going to be. Dope. I am. I can say that. Well, well, one day I'm at I work. I can say that because I, I didn't sign an NDA. Yeah. And also, you just guessed it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm a fan. I yeah, actually watched the show. You watched the show. But one day I was at work. This is kind of a cute story. Um, our script supervisor, her name is Brittany, she comes like beelining for me, and I did not say anything in this in this scene. So basically, she's there to make sure that you like say everything right. Right. And like, if you picked that up with your left hand, you pick it up with your left hand in the next setup. Right, right. So she like comes beelining for me, and I was like, I don't know, I don't know what she's gonna say to me. She's like, I gotta tell you something. I was like, what? She goes, she's like, the camera department. Is Okay. Oh, first what? day you got a nickname from the camera guys? Yeah. That's love. She's like, they have a little crush on you. 
I was like, oh. She's like, they call you Nikki Bang Bang. Nikki Bang Bang. Nikki Bang Bang is my nickname. That's interesting. I What's love the it. reference? You're gonna have to find out. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's a show reference. Yeah. Nikki, Nikki Bang, Bang Bang. Bang. Kapow. Yeah. Uh, so then, so to wrap up this interview and segment, what are you nerding out on though? What is it like? You just can't help but watch. Like, okay, it's not really geek culture, but I so I get into like a binge phase. Yeah. What are you passionate about? Right now, I just finished Shit's Creek. I've heard. Oh my God! Watch. I've heard that's so good. It is. My so list of shows I have I to start binge watching is ridiculous. Luckily, I'm disabled and not working, so I got time. So you get to watch it. I I tend to I I actually tend to find television distracting. I should not say that as an actor. No, but a lots of actors don't even watch their own stuff. No. It's a it's a mental thing. Yeah. I get it's it. It's hard to watch. I hate watching me. Yeah. Right. But Schitt's Creek is so funny and like mindless, but brilliant. Yeah, right. It's so good. Eugene Levy, Danny Levy, him. like they're so, and so. And it's in, like it's last season right now too, it's right? It's the last season. Okay. I'm caught up to season five. See, up five seasons on Netflix. They're only 20 minute episodes. Easy to binge. They're so funny. They're so witty. They're so dumb, but so good. No, I love dumb. And smart at the same time. I also like smart. Yeah, yeah. Um, but other than that, like I've just been reading a lot. I moved into the forest. Yeah, a couple years ago. peace and serenity. Like yeah. follow her Instagram. Like she's just having. I want to move there. Yeah, I'm just like I don't, really but I want yeah. to. Yeah, but yeah, it's like one of those things. I literally am like in a season of life where I'm like, I just want to read books about self improvement. Yeah, so well, that's because that's life. You're going through one of those. You're going through one of those seasons of change. Yeah, and we all go through seasons, and that's a recurring theme on this podcast about going through your seasons and finding that balance of life to find your best inner goddess or god yeah so that you can think of this yeah so that's what i'm doing and so that's kind of like part of that is like watching great television riding horses being with my kids reading books just kind of being by myself yeah it's nice it's, it's a nice thing i'm bored of me however <laughs> well actually so like no there, there's a there is a phase where introspective is fucking exhausting right and once you get over that and you're like Oh, I don't have to deal with how shitty I am anymore. <laughs> now I can focus on how great I can be. Right, because you focus well, you on that emotional that. instability. Right. So now you have the emotional intelligence to look at the darkness and go, "I'm okay." Yeah. That is a part of me. You don't have to it, It's not me. Live there. It's just a part of me. Well, you don't Churchill, have to unpack and live there. Yeah. So I love that. Phrase. Churchill said, "Right, if you're going through hell, keep going." Right. Right. Don't stop. Don't stop. And like the. I can't even think of the country singer who sings it, but he takes it another step. He says, if you're going through hell, just keep going. You'll be out of there before the devil knows you're there. See? That's a good one. Yeah. I just read Dolly Parton's book. I think she referenced that as well. Really? Yeah. She starts everything. I Dolly. Love Dolly. Yeah. Everything in entertainment is just a ripoff from it's Dolly, Dolly Parton. Dolly. Yeah, it really is. Read her book. It's really cute. It, like I read it on a Sunday morning. It's like a okay. hundred and something pages. Well, I'm I'm gonna start actually doing some audibles and start listening to more oh, books because yeah. I, I I my miss favorite. I miss reading and I can't read for crap anymore because it just my it, oh yeah with my nerve damage in my eyes it just I can't. No, it audible's so. the best. Yeah. So like you hear that audibles, especially audibles, the book audibles, you should be sponsoring down the road show. Yeah. We're going to be listening to you a lot as well as these people. Yeah. I'm in the car a lot. So yeah, I, I do. I listen to a lot of books. Also with, with modern day, like technology, like I listened to Michelle Obama's book on audible right. and she reads it to you. Like what's better than that? Oh. You get the first lady to read her own book to you. It is. That's kind of amazing. I want that. I know. I felt high the whole time. I was like, this is amazing. That's way cool. Mm -hmm. I got mad respect for Michelle Obama. Yeah, and it's her birthday today, so happy birthday. It is her birthday today. Yeah, yeah I won't get into politics and what Trump did today on her birthday, but no. you know, whatever. Anyway, just leave it there. but <laughs> glad you're in town. Follow Elena Huffman and find out what convention she's going to be at so you can go get an autograph and have a chat with her. She's one of my favorite celebrities in Hollywood and one of my just favorite humans to talk to, period. Yeah. So, always a pleasure. Thanks for stopping in, and uh, we'll see you all. Down the road. Down the road. Mwah. Kaboom. Bam. Nikki Bang Bang. <laughs> all right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this first podcast in 10 years. Thank you to all my guests on this episode. Huge shout out to management at the Double Tree by Hilton in Albuquerque, New Mexico, for opening up a special meeting room just so I could get this interview with Elena Huffman in a quiet space. And thank you for setting aside some time to do this with me, Elena, because it was so much fun catching up with you. 
And uh, for those of you who don't know, you can find other interviews with her on this YouTube channel. She was one of the first people I ever interviewed at a convention. And so that's why it was fun to just have her as our special first guest back in 10 years. So thank you for doing this, Elena. Thank you to all the guests and thank you for tuning in and we'll see you down the road.